Hey everybody, I'm super excited to have Brett Porcio on the podcast today. Um, I met Brett um, via phone. We've never actually met in person, but he bought one of my products years ago and then we followed up and he's built an extremely successful business. So with that in mind, let's start the show. And we met at the College World Series, didn't well, we? Well, yeah, you, you actually, you, you, you invited me out there. Yeah. And I saw your office and hung out with you and then your uh, Anna and... I forgot who else took me to the game. It was awesome, man. I loved it. Yeah, that's awesome. It was really good that you came out because after I said that, I was like, oh, wait, 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 wait. You did come out. And um, so the College World awesome. Series is here in uh, in Omaha. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, and, and and they actually almost lost that like two years ago. They almost lost the Omaha almost lost the College World Series, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was really close, and it was right before because it was – um, they were bitching about the stadium, the old stadium that we used to have that, um, it, you know, it was kind of like this big grassy area where you sat on and um, there was it was limited seating and they um, the NCAA or whatever it would be was just like, you need to build a better facility or you know, we're going to take it somewhere else. And so at that point, um, they they had to like, I don't know if it was a bid on it or something, but they were able to retain it anyway. So it's such a, like a historic thing for us. Um, it's just a big deal. We don't have a lot of events here to bring people to Omaha, Nebraska. So um, they need to, they definitely need to keep their game up. So they spent a lot of money on that stadium. It's a pretty awesome stadium. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. So you, you went to the new one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it was probably the second year of the new one or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that one's really, really cool. And I think you, I don't know if you sat in our attorney's box seats. Yeah, it was oh. nice. Like we had the top section with the little, you know, top suite area where they had like you know all the food and everything. It was really cool. Okay, Brett. So tell the backstory of you bought a product I had called Shoe Money System. Yeah. And then we had extra like mentors and stuff like that that helped you get going. Yeah, you, I, I forgot what you had. Uh, you, I think you might have been affiliated with a program to where they would coach you. And I went through the coaching, and um, it was cool because I, I remember the guy who who actually sold or you know basically told me all about it. And then I wound up purchasing the courses with him or the time with the coaches. And he was a big he was a baseball player, so he really liked what I was doing and saw. The potential in it and uh, so I was excited and I remember when we started I was probably making 500 a month and then I was you know paid a good price and by the third month I had paid it off and was making you know three to four thousand a month and that was literally what started me and it just it hasn't stopped growing I've been on so what do you what do you think like what was the game changer for you to increase that revenue so much like right off the bat and with the basics that they did which was really good was you know just learning about the belcher button was you know the simple beginning like ooh, the belcher button it's a it's a tested button that converts really well and you know and then learning like you know kind of like long sales pages convert better than short sales pages i don't even know if that's that proven anymore with case studies back back then that was the thing and then um, just trying to constantly put out more content and funnel better, you know, really building good funnels and they helped me with my funnels and, and, and that was it. I mean, it was just really getting a good, you know, model there to, to really start uh, cycling and it, and it started working. I didn't have that in place. So this, this really started to work. I think that's like a key for a lot of people is the foundation of, and that's, I've tried to start some free programs on, uh, it's actually blogging.com. I might divide it out because it's kind of an all encompassing thing. I meant to just start it as a blog, but um, that's free. But it's probably going to, um, I want to create like an email ninja thing, which talks about, you know, creating a persona, the different kind of funnels, this and that. But and then do like an SEO engine stuff like that, just a bunch of free stuff. Um, um, kind of like I consider myself semi-retired, so it's just kind of fun to make a lot yeah. of free training programs. So um, yeah, so I think like my point was, you know, just the foundation of stuff like you know the belt button. And for those of you who don't know what that is, instead of us explaining it, just Google it because you'll find some really in-depth explanations and case studies and stuff like that. And I mean, there's it's always changing too. And you mentioned the short versus long. Um, and the, the evolution of that 
we on on the blog engine site we have about a 35 percent conversion ratio on cold traffic and higher on targeted traffic from like my list or other stuff like that and it's and that's kind of a lengthy page i just don't, so it was really surprising to me i tested a lot of different things but the one that's there now like converts the best and it's interesting because we have affiliates that I need to get users I did when back when the model was a little different. Now that it's completely free, I don't I can't really afford to pay affiliates because it's free. Um, but it has it has um, a lot of people coming through. There's there's a lot of people. Um, so anyway, it's just it just really teaches the people the foundation. You know, like like you were talking about in the conversion stuff and the affiliates back then wanted something smaller just an email submit or something like that and we tested it we had like you know whatever an affiliate wanted to do we created it and they tested it and I said, you know, it doesn't work as well as the other one so it was always really 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 interesting well, i mean i just think the initial experience with you was i think we all need to be getting started is you need like just a format like a template of something that's that we can just start in but, and playing um, with and learning that's it. And, and that was it's, it's not I think, I think we're just lost sheep, you know trying to figure out where to go god i could make a conversion yeah man. program too it's like it's really where does it stop you know there's, right. <laughs> and i think that that's kind of my thing is it, it i mean i've been doing this for 12 years i'm semi well-rounded not only physically unfortunately but um I'm not in a horrible shape, but it's gotten buff like you. But do you have any kids yet? Yeah, I got two girls. I've got a three year old and a six, or almost six. So I'm, I'm in the weeds a little bit. You got what? You got girls, right? Yeah, I got an eight and a 10 year old. So I got, with you saying that, I got no excuse. Usually I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, kids, you don't have time to work out. But so, so Brett's business, we haven't even got into that, is, um, and it maybe it's evolved and changed since last we talked. But um, you're a pitcher, mm -hmm. and did you did you you played in the minors? Did you? Well, you, my story is I went my rotator cuff in college. And the doctor said I was wasting my time with the torn rotator cuff. That I would never, I, I didn't have the eligibility to try to get it back. I should do something else. And I love the game so much. I was like, I'm not quitting at 18. Like it, it really depressed me to hear that. So. I didn't know how I was going to get back. I just thought if I just persisted, something would happen. And it was just a long road of learning what went wrong, learning how to do this better. And a lot of it was getting away from baseball because baseball this is very conventional. And and I got myself back and, and at 26, uh, was drafted in an independent minor league organization in San Diego and, and got to kind of the dream. Played with Jose Canseco. He was on my team and Ricky Henderson and – it was a great league, and, and I got to play in Europe as well. And, and then I turned it – I kept my passion going. I turned it into a coaching and, and coaching program, you know, and that's when I met you. And that and that was just strictly online. Was that in, for DVD sales or – Well, I mean, or? Man, I've been digital since day one. I, I still haven't sent out a DVD. I mean, it was literally download my ebook and get my instructional videos as streams. And I, and I had a little streaming platform that I hacked out of the Zen card. And I still actually kind of have that up, but I, I I do it now with Kajabi and some other stuff. But um, and and I've stayed digital, and and yeah, I'm selling my intellectual property, my training programs to develop velocity. So yeah, I, I that's one thing I love about you is that you're an action taker, and that's the thing that most frets, frustrates me. Like like you said, you hacked you know this thing to make it work. And actually, and I mean like my biggest successes have always been me just figuring out how to start work and other people laughing at the way I do it laughing at my code but they don't laugh when they see the paycheck right so it was kind of funny when I when I hacked that Zen card and it was streaming the the video this is back in 2008 I don't think many people were streaming back then and is all the those in my field all my competition literally gave me no respect when it came to what i was promoting but yet they were all emailing me going hey where did you get that system <laughs> can can we get it you know that's funny yeah. and that's i mean that's totally i can totally relate to that because when i started back 
my big first hit was the ringtone site I had, and it was written so poorly that the server would. I basically it would crash so often that I just had to, and I would have to like hunt down. I would have the server automatically reboot itself every hour. Exactly. Yeah, I but I worked and I made you know two three million a year and profit off that site. <laughs> and awesome. you know, and for and that was like eight months. It would it would just reboot itself every. I mean, it, it'd be down like eight minutes. I'm sure the server company loved you, unless that was automated. It was. It was actually. This is so long ago that. Um, in 2000, you know, 2005, I mean, the uh, it was actually a free server that an yeah. ISP that I worked at many years before. Just like it was like a Pentium 200, like super outdated, wow. and it was actually a Linux kernel that was panicking. And then um, I brought in uh, David Delanave at that time, who was just like, you know, fifteen dollar an hour programmer, and he like recompiled the kernel and did all this stuff. And this was, I was kind of new to all that server administration stuff. I, I had done it, but not at that level and, you know, fix it. And um, yeah, and then, and then it stayed out a little longer, but it's, um, but it's amazing. Yeah, like guys who take action and just make shit work, hack it together, whatever, just get the job done. Like those are the guys that make it work. And yeah, I mean, like, um, you got to keep momentum. Like, momentum's everything, man. Like, if you, if you let something slow your momentum down, I mean, that's crushing. I think, that, like, it doesn't matter. It's like, whatever, bubble gum and duct tape. Keep it going, man. It's momentum, you know? I have a question. So, you um you messed up your rotator cuff. Is that because you were, like, the, like in high school, they were kind of pushing you to throw too hard? or? Well, when you threw hard, um, then they overthrow you. So they took a kid that wasn't being developed or strengthening and, and wasn't in a good routine and they overthrew him until he injured his arm, until he tore it, which is very common. Still happens all the time. Yeah, I've heard that. I had one of my, one of my best friend um, who was the best man in my wedding and he was just out here last weekend. Um, it's funny because he, he doesn't like attention on Facebook. And so like I'll, I'll tag him all the time. <laughs> and I'll be like, hey, if you want to talk to the guru who taught me everything, like messages. And he's like, dude, <laughs> drive. It's so it's just hilarious. Um, oh, but he threw the most wicked breaking ball that I've ever. I mean, I, I played, you know, just little league. But when he was in, in high school, I mean, he would throw a curveball that was and he was left handed. He would throw it just just so nasty. And they just kept playing him and pushing him so much. That he just just ruined his arm, and so he didn't even make it through high school. He had to have surgery and and all that stuff. And it's a shame. And I still talk to him about it. And you can you can tell it's a touchy subject because you know he's he um it's not so touchy now, but it was for a long time. Because there was another kid we went to high school with that played for the Red Sox, and um, my friend George was he was actually a, a really really good um, batter um, as well as. Um, as pitcher, but you know that was high school. Who knows? Who knows how you develop once you once you face good talent? But exactly. that's too bad. So, all right. So the cool thing is, so you sell this online now. How do you market it? How do you get traffic to it? Man, I mean, you know, through the years, it's been everything. From, you know, just organic. You know, not a lot of value, putting a lot of content and converting that, and then of course doing getting into Facebook and starting like building Facebook page and, and boosting content. And then I'll tell you right now, man, I'm blowing up with Snapchat. Snapchat is awesome. Like I can't believe how amazing it is. So I think I've really gotten good at social. I used to look at my Google analytics every day. I don't look at them anymore. I mean, it's just amazing how I could care less about organic traffic, even though it's still good. I just love my social business right now. So. Yeah, it's it's one of those things too with my blog at shumani.com. Like we, I rarely make a blog post anymore. Um, it's almost always these interviews, you know, and the video replays and the MP3 downloads and the iTunes downloads. And it's just like like I because really my Facebook is pretty much where I post, um, like things I would have posted on my blog. And I get such like back in the day when I would post something on my blog, I'd get a hundred comments. And now with Facebook, um, I get like maybe two or three, you know. But people will comment on the link to it, 
in Facebook. And so I just actually turned off comments completely because 100% of it was spam. And I was just like, what's the point? And so, you know, like I'll, I'll come up with, with a, when I really want to outline something really well and show screenshots and case studies and stuff like that, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll post something and I'll pin it um, just because it'll get lost with all the, the video stuff. But yeah, for the most part, the social stuff, like when I stream, you know, like a live Facebook stuff, now that they got that, um, you know, like I'll get so many views and so many comments and questions and. It's just the interaction level. And I've I've never done Snapchat, like me doing it. I follow some people in there, mostly porn stars. Um, but, you know, I don't know. If you, I, was I read, kidding I read your book, Jeremy. I, I know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I heard that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's uh, it's it's really it's it's fascinating. And so do you. Uh, like the um, what's the other one? Like the Periscope. Do you ever do that? I, you know, I started on that before Snapchat, and then Snapchat just consumed me. So I, you know, Periscope is good. I think. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out the difference between that and Snapchat. I mean, I know Snapchat is just it's a you know it's, it's not so much. I don't know. I just I think I like the little clips that Snapchat does. I think. Periscope is just it's just a running kind of webcam. I I, I don't think that's as, as appealing as something that forces you to do things in quick little bits, and I think it it keeps things more uh, attractive to viewers. Do you have you ever done a live um, Facebook one? Yeah. Like a Facebook live? Yeah, what, I forget what they call it. Yeah, is it Facebook Live? Yeah, I think it is. Um, no, I don't know the Facebook. I know what's it because Facebook has what one for celebrities, and then they have now. I guess you can just literally go live on your Facebook page. I mean, no, I mean I usually mostly use my Facebook to post. I do a daily show, um, so I just do a, a where I answer questions. So I post that every day. I am always trying to drive some type of video every day. Yeah. That's awesome. It's awesome that you've stayed with it. So you've got the DVD stuff, and then. You do you have an upsell to that? Not got so much now. I've got so basically, I've got position player programs for velocity training. I got pitcher programs. I've got a catching program for pop times. I'm actually here uh, with someone who's helping me develop the softball programs. Um, I've got uh, you know some bits and little bits in there of like a mobility training program. And I, I mean, obviously, I funnel them to my big programs, my pitching velocity program, my pitching velocity camps, which is my upsell. Um, I've got like an upsell between that, like an online course. And, uh, then I've got where I push them to my position player programs. And then once, you know, at that point, I think I just, I'll throw little bits and pieces at them. I don't think I have a perfect funnel. I just kind of see where the attention is. And then, then I just try to go there, deliver value. And then I just kind of throw different things at them. Specifically like Snapchat. It's so Snapchat is so easy to do that. And then I just watch what's really selling well. And then I kind of stay there. You know, I just, I, I'm, I'm very uh, an organic personality. I, I don't really go in systems. I just kind of like moving with the trends, you know? And I, I have to say, like, you made a good point earlier about analytics. Like I threw some numbers out there about our conversion and stuff like that. Um, but Oh, I got a focus. Um, but the one thing I noticed was when I do it from social media, like the page can look like shit and it converts because it's like people have met you, vir you know, virtually. You've answered their questions. You've done, you know, stuff like this. And when we do hangouts or we do whatever and it's just like, hey, there's a real person behind this, you know, and stuff. I think it just resonates so much and it's like, okay, do I need, you know, I'm giving people value and I'm sure that's what you, when you just answer questions about like, that kind of stuff. And the way, like I got authenticated, um, my personal profile got um, the blue check mark a while ago and then I had the option to stream. And so I started doing it. I thought everyone could do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, people were like, I can't, I don't have the option to do that. I don't know. I mean, like, I think anyone and everyone can do it now. Mm -hmm. I, I saw, yeah, I, 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 I did. I think you can do it through your page, but there is a specific app for Facebook Live that I think you have to be a celebrity. Hmm. So I guess you're a celebrity, Jeremy. Is that what we're saying? You know, the 
Everyone <laughs> asked me like how how did I get like a, a verified Twitter account or you know the check mark there or the check mark on Facebook, and it I never asked for it, but what I did was there were so many people impersonating me um, on Twitter, you know, that would have like the real shoe money, you know, like shoe money for real, you know, like all the ones who actually didn't get their account, like what they do, or like Jeremy Shoemaker, you know, like just there was, God, I think there was over 85. And so on Twitter, so um, I hired someone just to go down and just send me a URL to all of them. I just paid almost like 10 bucks to do it some overseas person. And um, they gave me all the URLs and I submitted them all to Twitter. And then they sent me back a thing saying, hey, can you send in your driver's license? And, you know, I forget what else. And um, and we'll verify your account. And then, you know, then all of a sudden there's a blue check mark. And then with Facebook, it was a somewhat similar situation. We had somebody doing something where we subpoenaed their information. Um, and it was... It was somebody advertising using our AdSense check, and we just we didn't go after them. We just which we people think I go after everybody. I don't. We try to get them to stop first, and usually, so I subpoenaed Facebook. Um, Facebook is the only company ever to deny a subpoena. Like eBay will give up anyone's information. Um, web hosting companies never had a problem. Um, anything that's a different dumb object about the legality. So Facebook wouldn't. But they sent me a thing saying, hey, did you know you can verify your profile um, because of whatever? And so then I just send in a same same process. They just send in your whatever, and then I got a check mark next thing I knew. So, and I think it's also the Wikipedia thing plays into it, yeah. too. So, yeah, I want that course, Jeremy. How do I get a Wikipedia and verified on Facebook and Twitter? So um, I think Wikipedia is important for both of those because Wikipedia is, is – it's also for Google as well because it's it's somewhat the ultimate screener. They have, you know, such – like people had made a Wikipedia page about me and it was deleted like probably like 20 times. Someone would be like, hey, I tried to make one and then they removed it. And so there's, a, there's actually always a talk tab where you can see the discussions on the page. And so you can see like somebody added it and then somebody would like say, oh, removed it, he's not notable. And then, you know, and then someone actually ended up doing a lot of research on me and they actually reached out to me and said, you know, um, you talk, you do charity work, you do stuff like this. Is there any websites that have written about that? And there, and I said, yeah, there's, you know, Surgeon Journal did that when I had this charity thing and then, you know, when I sold auction ads, that was something. But you have to, they say you have to do something notable. So um, it's its good to get press. And if you have press, then it's easy. I have to say it's very easy to get a Wikipedia page. So philanthropy, um, like with me, it was just a matter of somebody putting everything together. So when um, the guy who actually put it all together, I don't know him. Um, and that's not the initial guy that reached out to me, but he actually like did a lot of research on me and even had a couple things in there that I was like, well, you know, whatever it's there. So, um, you know, I'd won an SEO contest, I, which I guess was somewhat notable. I sold auction ads, I sold, you know, the power program stuff. I sold, you know, like, um, which actually was cool because we actually re retained the, and it's a long story. Um, but also, like, I've given, you know, like, 80 grand to in wearing companies T-shirts, um, you know, and then my legal battles. So between those, and I think there's a couple other things on there, like, I guess I was considered notable. And that stuck for, like, three or four years. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, like. I think press, you're right. I think press is huge, so. Yeah, and that's that's the thing is it can't be like obviously because I never had gone after press. Oh, when I was on the Fast Company thing, like I was on the cover and the most influential person uh, thing. That was that was kind of the thing that solidified it. Um, but you, I'm sure you've been in a bunch of magazines. I'm sure you know if you've done any philanthropy stuff. You know, um, you know. Well, I, need, I need to do more philanthropy, but no, I mean it's it's been tough. I mean, 
I think with in my profession, they don't really highlight coaches that much. So it's still yeah. very much a player profession. So it is it's tough to get press. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I mean, it hasn't affected my success. I mean, my success has purely been built on how I grow online. It really doesn't even link to the game that much. But yeah, I mean, I, I totally get it. I think I need to get to okay. I think I will as I age. I'll get more credit, gain more credibility. I mean, I've worked with the, the Tampa Rays as a biomechanics analyst. I've worked with the Dodgers as a biomechanics analyst. I've um, I've got a major, major leaguer that's been training with me two years. It's really put my name out there. I just need more of that, you know. Right. I think it, you know what would be cool is if you if you got a celebrity on there, you know, like a not like a celebrity apprentice, but um, I don't know. Maybe that's a dumb idea. Let's let's re, let's edit that out. Um, <laughs> so you got to play with Jose Canseco. So I have to. I think I did. I ever tell you what a Jose Canseco nut yeah. fan I am? You, what'd you say that again? I, I love Jose. I think you did on our, when we did our interview a while ago. I think you, we talked about him a little bit. I can't remember what we talked about. But. Yeah. My parents have, I need to move it here. I made this in wood shop. I built this big, giant thing. And it had Jose Canseco at the top. And it has all of his baseball cards, like ever up to that point, which would have been 92. And I think he was a rookie in 86. Six, yeah. Yeah. What's up? I still remember that. Um, I think McGuire was shortly after, or yeah, something like that. No, so, I think no. McGuire was a rookie in like '84. Really, I remember his Donruss. I thought it was '84. Like, yeah. When someone said I might not be right, but I thought it was '84. Might have to look it up. Yeah, something like that. But do you know what this card is? We talked about this last time. Hell yeah, it's the the fuckface card. You know, I do so much shit that I forget. <laughs> I know you do. We yeah, talked about, this, we talked about like, all the crazy, uh, uh, the changes they tried to do to cover it up, like the white out and the right, the black box, the white box. Well, I, did, I did. I tell you the story. My coach that I played for in indie ball actually is the the guy who wrote "fuck fix" on his back. That is, see, that should be in his Wikipedia page. <laughs> his name is Terry Kennedy, and. He, they were screwing with Billy Rifkin, and they they were knew they were doing baseball cards today, and they said all the bats were laid out on the grass, and they went up to his bat and wrote fuckface on the bottom of it. <laughs> that is so epic. Can you, for those who've never seen it, like, uh, like right down the bottom, you can see the writing, and it says... Right. Yeah, it says fuckface. Right. Fuckface. And so that's officially the most ever printed baseball card ever because they had to do so many rounds of it. And that was a great year for baseball cards. 1989, you had Ken Griffey, Sheffield. Um, uh, there was some. There was a catcher I'm not thinking of. That, wait, that's Fleer. Is that eight, what Fleer is that? 88? Yeah, 89 four. That was a one of my favorite looking yeah. cards of all time. Because that's when Upper Deck came out too, right? Yes, the Ken Griffey Upper Deck was like yeah. so expensive. Yep. Yeah, because that would have been. Yeah, that was Griffey's rookie. And that upper deck, I remember, was like twenty bucks. <laughs> like, I remember that card shot up to like fifty bucks when it first came out. Now it's like it's like twenty cents. Maybe. Did you ever watch the story of how they started Upper Deck? Mm -mm. Real quick, it was just two guys selling baseball cards, and they met a major league baseball player, and they told him, "Look, we need help to get in to sell. We want to start our own card." And it took forever. I mean, literally, it was like they had to go through everything just like, to get in, and they got in. And they said it was like printing money once they got it because they were the first ones outside of baseball to, to have their own card brand, card company. And they, I think they were the first one to do foil. Probably. Um, right. Because with these ones and tops and everything else, um, some people back in the day might have sold them in high school but used like an iron to melt the wax and open them, take out the good ones, and maybe – yeah, put it back. People <laughs> them. I never did that in a card show. Yeah, yeah, maybe, but you, you know, and then reseal them. But yeah, with the and with the actual big. oil packs, you know, those were super. You couldn't do it. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So you mentioned. Um, okay, so you, but I think when we first talked, like back in the day, you were just doing like coaching. I think was your only upsell. Yeah, I think, uh, well, it was my camp, my camp, which is they come down right. and, they, and they train. But, um, I mean, 
it's technically it's still my better upsell. I charge up to two thousand for two days. I give them a week of training here, and I have you know my training uh, facilities here, and it's still as much as I don't like selling my time. I, I still like selling a product. It's still such a great upsell, you know. Yeah. Have, do you ever have you ever launched like a complete product, like an info product kind of thing? Like um. Like what do you mean? I guess like yeah. like on a like on a ClickBank thing, like the yeah, you know, I get on ClickBank. Okay, yeah, I mean, my my first product, my my velocity program. Oh, okay. Is on ClickBank and it's on my site. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess I should have done my homework on that. See, I've I've the worst memory. It's like. Well, you just I, doing too many interviews, man. Yeah, <laughs> I am. I do. I do too many, but I've never forgotten about you because it's, it's it's like you're that percentage of person that just does shit and it's so rare and everyone always asks me like you know how do you make money online what should i do should i you know get into this particular subject and i always tell them like what do you what do you like like what do you want to do what are you passionate about because the biggest successes i've ever had came from me doing something and not even because of the money and the things i've done that I made that were just fun and I was excited about and I was passionate about the side effect was money of those things. And, you know, like a lot of, I still build a lot of applications and, you know, just stuff that I think are cool. And like my little shoemoney.net now blog ninja training program. I mean, that thing grew and became extremely successful. And because we use web hosting affiliates and, you know, other affiliates grew into a six figure a month business in, you know, I wrote that whole thing in two weeks and it's just like, I decided one day, like I want to leave a legacy of just like pure, awesome training programs for people who do say, you know, I just want to know what this is about. You know, I just want to know like without, cause now there's so back in the day, like I could create a program and sell it because there was only so many people right. and now there's 8 million gurus selling stuff. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make these things. And our source of traffic now is all like, as you gain levels and we, we call it Ninja because you get like yellow bell, you know, as you build your blog and you can share those on Facebook. And so all about 90% of our traffic comes from people, you know, posting those on Facebook as they, cool. as they level up. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's um it's something I've it's been really a fun um it's well, been you know, really I, a fun and, and rewarding experience. So I mean I think for those out there that are looking at really getting started and, and, and being successful, it you're right. It, it's all about commitment. I mean it is in my uh coaching here, you know, these kids that come in that I always say their eyes are bigger than their stomach. It's like they want this, but they don't really want it. It's like you have to really want this. So you better hope it's a passion because if not, you're not going to want to wake up and do it on the days you feel like crap or you're sick or, you know, the momentum is slowing down. You know, that's, it's so important that you have to pick something that you like because you, you have to relentlessly drive it and, and you'll figure it out. If you're relentlessly driving it, you will figure it out. You know, following guys like you, you, you'll, you help us, you help us go in the right direction. So we're not just spinning our wheels, but, Problem is most people just don't have the initial uh, part correct. You know, are they they're not passionate, they're not committed, and that's that's where most of them fail. You know, right? And I, I do this thing. Um, you know, people are like, "How can I make a bunch of money overnight?" And I'm like, "Well, I'll tell you. You know, like it's there's a lot of ways to make money on like literally overnight. There's because arbitrage exists everywhere, right. and and you can now with the internet you can leverage." Um, like, you know, like Dell will have deals all the time on refurbished Apple. Um, I'm looking at, I've got the Mac pro with a little trash can, um, on the refurbished site, this, the, and it's weird the way they price things like this one is probably sold for about $12,000 new and I got it for 5,000 and it's refurbished, but it comes with full warranty and everything. Well, I could resold that on eBay used for probably eight or nine. You know, and, and it's like Dell, like that's where I made a lot of money was buying from Dell's refurbished website, selling them on eBay. And that was it. That was so simple. And it's really risk-free because Dell pays for return shipping. 
So it's like you buy them. And actually at the end of it, what I would do is I would um, place the order and it takes about seven hours for them to do the order. And then I would put like buy it nows on it. And then if they didn't get bought, then I would cancel it and then redo it. And so that way I was out absolutely nothing. So I would actually sell them before I even got them. And so the one thing that I, I've drawn out this game plan for years on, and I posted new things I've learned is, is the iPhone every time it launches. And I have this whole playbook on how to do it. And it's completely risk-free because you, I pay these college kids 50 bucks a piece to wait in line and I roll in at eight or 9 AM and I go in and I'm their, you know, rich uncle and you can buy two, you know, iPhones per line. And, you know, and I go and put them all on my credit card and then, you know, pay them their 50 bucks and I put them on eBay and I've, and over the years I've gotten really good at it. And I've never made less than, I would say 40% of my money is I've made as much as 80%, you know, and I mean, as a whole, and I don't do it for the money. It's, it's just like, this is what I can't stop is like, I do it because like I get to share it with people and it's so weird that that's my passion. But I like to just do have that passion. I mean, I think look at when you buy tickets, man. It's like, you know, when you go buy a ticket, I, I bought one to Justin Timberlake. My wife wanted me to go, right? I was like the only guy in the Justin Timberlake concert. But that's what it was. I think I paid like I wanted to get like the best seats. You know, we, we got to sit in the little center bar area mm-hmm. on the main floor and he literally danced around the bar. And I think I paid like two thousand dollars for two tickets and they, they originally sold for like three hundred each. So right. Obviously, there's a big, there's a lot of arbitrage in tickets, you know. I did that with Taylor Swift, so I won up you on the, uh, <laughs> on the feminine level. Um, <laughs> and I just did that with Justin Bieber too. Oh so, my gosh! I yeah. Can't... Well, I've got I got two little girls. Even though, oh, there you go. <laughs> even though I don't mind the music, I'll be honest. Actually, Taylor Swift was really good. Yes, like she was really good. And, but I have to tell you, Justin Bieber, like I hear the songs all the time. I think his songs are good. He's, he's a good kid. And, um, horrible in concert. I was, I was so like really, really, really like, he just like didn't have energy. It was, it was like a Cirque du Soleil show. And I don't know if you like rap music, but the best, what's that? Yeah, kind of. I mean, I, all my guys play it here. I hear it all the time. So. so the the best concert I've ever attended was Jay-Z. And he just stood on stage with his jeans and his Timberlake, you know, Timberland boots and his white white feeder shirt and just rapped, you know, with a beat. And is just like he's just so talented that he didn't need dancers. He didn't need all this other stuff. With that said though, Katy Perry puts on an amazing show and Pink is ridiculously good in concert. Now, my wife's into them. I actually, I, I'm not gonna lie. Like I like the music too. But um, yeah, it's there, there's a lot of cool concerts. And when your kids get, you know, my kids are 10 and eight now. So I've got a little window yeah. where it's cool to go with dad, you know, yeah. to shows. So I'm, yeah, I'm awesome. So. That. Right around the corner. So do you, it's the Snapchat thing fascinates me. You're the first person I've ever talked to that uses Snapchat for business. And maybe I'll just. I'll show you, like, look how well it's doing for me. I mean, I'm in a really tight niche. So it's like, I'm not, I'm not pulling crazy traffic, but um, I convert really well. I think my conversions are like, you know, five to eight percent um which i'm happy with um and i have and i have high-end products i'm, I'm, I'm selling like a 500 to a two thousand dollar product i'm not selling like fifty dollar or hundred dollar products right. um, so i'm very happy with it but of course and this is the thing i've been on i'm probably getting about eight thousand views per snap right now and it won't even log in every time i try to log in it loads forever and loads forever and it takes me literally three or four minutes to log in i don't think Snapchat is fully built for guys that are growing like this. I'm really growing on Snapchat. That's it's amazing. I mean, like I, I've never looked into Snapchat, and you know, I, 
I don't even know if I've got a. I heard it's sucking up. I heard it's sucking up Instagram's um, business. I heard it's Instagram's getting stuck in between Snapchat and Facebook, and they say it's really starting to hurt uh, Instagram. See, when that happens, Facebook will snatch it up. Um, they tried. I think they offered them three billion, and they turned it down. What? Yeah. See, those are the kinds of things where. See, it's like Groupon turned down this massive, yeah. massive offer years ago, right? And then they went public and, you know, I guess people made money. But, you know, I – when – because people didn't understand the play when Facebook bought um, – my camera keeps going out of focus. I don't know what's up with that. Um, so maybe I just need to get all up in it. Yeah. Um, so the when Facebook bought Instagram for – I think it was $2 billion, People were like, you know, this is a free thing. Why would they do this? And it's it's all about real estate. And so with the popularity of Periscope and Snapchat, I believe that's why they did, you know, well, you know, they I think probably Periscope more than Snapchat is when they started to develop their own live thing. Cause that they already did live because I remember the UFC would have prelims live on Facebook, and that was the first time I'd ever seen that. Um, and I don't that must have been something they worked out for it because I'd never seen anything anyone else be able to do that before, but maybe I don't know. Um, I think everyone, like you said, is going video and because I think internet is consuming so much of, of TV that I think it's just all going video. And I think also in a space, um, like I, I mean like I'm really getting out of the like guru space. Like I just I want to make like really cool free products and help people, but like I don't want to like I'm not even going to affiliate summit in New York. Just I just I don't speak anymore and you know I've kind of been doing some investing in companies and I kind of feel like in a weird way that I don't really have anything more to achieve in that affiliate marketing world, um, I would, I've would i never said that on my blog or whatever, and that may sound egotistical, but um, I've just won every war, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so, you know, it's more like I'm actually going out to San Diego to meet with a company um, that's already thriving, but, you know, they want me to come on board as an advisor or a board member, and, you know, I, I want to play a more active role than that, but... You know, like I like things like that now where I can go into a company, um, you know, a lot of startups don't really, you know, they're startup, but they don't understand customer acquisition, you know, and stuff like that. And they all yeah. fail, especially the ones locally here. Like they have like a 99% failure rate. And it just, there's, yeah. I've given up around here on VC firms and they're just, they're so, they just want to act like they're players and they don't understand anything. But um, you know, with that said, it's it's just um, I think it's great that that you've stuck with your passion so long. Yeah, I mean, it's only because it, it really is a passion. I think I don't think passions die, you know. Right. I think I should have stuck with video games because video games is something that I oh, I mean, as fucked up as that sounds. And you and and you're right. You should have because look at YouTube, man. It just it blows my mind when I see these people just playing video games on YouTube and it's got millions of views. Right. There's one game I play on occasion called Dota, and I've, I've clocked in the last six, seven years, probably, I don't even want to look, but it's probably 6,000 games, and it, it takes about a half hour a game, so that's, that's a decent amount of time. Um, the, the thing is, a lot of times I alt-tab out you know, and we'll do stuff like once I get killed or something, but it's, it's not an MMO where you constantly, it's just like, it starts over. You freaking fight for half hour and then the game's over. It's like, it's not like a, a one, you know, like a, those MMOs thing. Just, I got wrapped up in that when I was younger and it cost me like two years of my life. Um, anyway, so that one has a tournament and they're giving away that like every year they do it. It's called the international and, Three years ago, I don't know what it is. I haven't followed it that closely, but it was like 24 million. And this is a the, there's a documentary called Free to Play about it because the game's free. It's totally free, and they have sponsors like crazy, and they sell in-game items. Like it's not anything that helps you, but it's like if you want your guy to have like a cool sword or something. Um, 
they have this marketplace and they've just got, you know, 50 million people worldwide playing this. They generate enough revenue from sponsors and all this other stuff. They have events like almost every day somewhere in the world. And then they have this international event once a year. But there's a documentary. I recommend anyone watch it because it's called Free to Play. And it basically follows this Swedish team all the way that actually wins it. And sorry, spoiler alert. Um, but, you know, it's it's actually, it's just so interesting that a video game, I mean, it shows like these these kids' parents, like when they were younger, giving them so much shit about playing video games and all this. And then the team that won, each of the members got like three or four million U.S. Um, and they paid out a lot. But it's, we all kind of have that story. I mean, I played Nintendo so much when I was a kid. My dad called me Nintendo, but like he hated it. And then, then I told him I was going to go to computer school to learn you know, like animation, basically. And he told me I was an idiot. And then the whole time, like that's how I make my living. I, I make it on on computers, and and it's almost like gaming. It's kind of the same thing, you know. Right. I'm. I actually am. I have a lot of um, maybe bad habits. Like I am. People ask me like, how the hell do you do anything? Because I am a real. I'm. A, I'm a TV show junkie. And there's actually a, a section on my blog, which isn't really public, but it's something I send people to when they're like, when we start talking TV, I'm like, and it has like all the series is divided out. And I mean, if you were ever to look at it and all the TV shows that I've gone through the series, it's ridiculous. And I mean, like I, I could be a reality TV blogger. Um, I would rather, I'm like jealous because I'm really close to, I don't know, you probably don't watch Big Brother, I'm sure. But um, I, I actually recently went on a reality show that's pretty big, and I cannot disclose what it was. But Dang. they, they well, pulled. How out. do we know to watch? What's that? Where do we go to watch? How do we know? I can't. I can't give out. It's actually like I can be fined up to like a quarter of a million dollars per infringement. You got to wait for it to go out, then you can tell us. Yeah, I can say that it. It should be out by the my episode that I'm on should air the first week. I've actually, this is the first time I've ever talked about it. Um, it should air first or second week in August. Um, that's what we've been told. So, but I don't know. I don't know when, I mean, they've said like, you know, the schedule is kind of, I can tell you like I did some stuff on it, which might not reflect the best on me. Um, you know, in editing, they can do whatever they want. I, I totally, predict them to portray me in a light that's not flattering to my family, you know, that maybe like would have a viewing party, but yeah, it's, it's going to be nuts. Um, it's, it's literally going to be nuts. But anyway, like, a um, with big brother, I've tried out for that for seven years and last year was my closest. I made it to a second casting call, um, which I thought I was in, uh, but it's um, I'm I I didn't even try out for this season, but um, it's yeah, I'm just so frustrated with it. And the casting company, the casting director, I fuck with her on Twitter now. So um, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, like I I've always like there's a show. My whole point to this was there's a show called Big Brother Gossip that I sponsor it. And if you listen, you'll hear me. And I give them like fifty bucks per episode. And on, on Patreon, which is I love that thing because it's around podcasters. So you can sponsor them per episode or you can just flat sponsor them per month. And so these people do like an episode a week and then they'll, you know, whatever. So um, I think that's super cool and I'm really happy. I mean, they only get like, I think they're up to like 800 a month or something like that. But these, I mean, like I'm jealous of them because here they get to just talk about this and like I would do this for free in a minute. You know, if anyone would listen. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I was supposed to be on The Bachelorette. You were? Yeah, I literally was. I signed the contract. Was it ABC? They flew me out to ABC in, in Hollywood. And I was literally going on the show. But that was the first episode. This is a long time ago. That was the first episode when they let the girl pick. Or she could weed out two guys of the final before the show even started. Like she could just look at them and go, "Okay, these are the two I don't want," and I was one of the two, and she kicked me. 
I was oh, literally no. going, <laughs> but my wife loves to butt in at this point and said, I'm so glad he didn't get on that show. <laughs> I know. Anna. I knew Anna would flip shit because she just said, shut up. I'm freaking out. Um, Cause I'm just going to tell you, I watched the bachelor and the bachelorette and at the end I cry like a little bitch. I'm not even joking. I, I like literally my wife will be like, are you crying? And I'll be like, no, I mean like, I, it just moves me emotionally. I don't know, like whatever. I just love the contract that they made me sign. It was literally like this thick. Oh, and it was dude. like, you have no rights to your your body for the next two years. I should I should send you what they what the show I actually was on. Um everything that I had to do. It was insane. Um and all the the one thing that's seriously cool is that I got clearance to wear my shoe money shirt like throughout the entire show. No so way. That's awesome. I mean, the, show, the show pulls like five to seven million viewers and um, I can't say the other parts of it, but uh, there's some things involved where I think we could move the needle. And when I say we, there's just, there's a reason I say we, because it wasn't just me. So and there was others and see the problem is if I yeah, I just anyway. Um it's not the yeah. apprentice, is it? <laughs> What's that? You're not on the apprentice, is it? No, no, no. It's um <laughs> it's actually the funniest thing is I'd never heard of this TV show before this. And they approached me through my blog and said, you know, we think you'd be great for the show and here's how it works. And so I, I forwarded it to Anna and it's like her favorite show. And then, um, it's, I don't know. It's, it's weird. I, I love survivor. I love like all the, all the like amazing race. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just a TV and my kids like absolutely love the bat. Like on, like right now on Monday nights is a bachelorette Tuesday nights, big brother, or I mean, Wednesday and Thursdays, big brother. And then um, Friday, there's nothing. And, and then Sunday, Big Brother again. But I mean, you know, gosh, when Breaking Bad and Walking Dead and all those were on at the same time and Justified and Sons of Anarchy, that was busy. And uh, Homeland and like all those. I mean, yeah, I've taken them on. There's nothing in IMDb in the top 100 I haven't seen, like the entire. And I'll go through them again. I just went through the entire season of Justified a couple weeks ago and breaking bad boot a couple weeks for that. And now I'm going back to game of Thrones, but I just like, it's just something I do before I go to bed. And I, I don't average much sleep, like four to six hours a night is what I run on. Like since I was like 18, you're giving half your life away for reality uh, TV. So you're saying, <laughs> yeah, but a lot, but I always have my laptop out. Like always, unless it's a new episode, like, like when I go through like Breaking Bad again or like Justified again, it's kind of like I'm listening to the radio, right? So I'll just have my laptop out and I'll do this. And with like video games, I use it as a reward system. So like I'll have, um, you know, like all these tasks to do. And then I'll be like, okay, so I get this, 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 and this done and then I'll play a game, you know? So I don't know. It's just I'm wired differently. I think, you know, you find a lot of people. So which season was it for you? It was the, um, it was the, God, this is going back. It, I think it was before, remember the Firestone era? Remember when he came on The Bachelorette and I think then became The Bachelor after that? I think it was that season. Like, do you remember the Firestone era? He's literally the heir to the Firestone brand. No, I've only I've actually only watched like the last three seasons. I've only that's when I Obviously, only started getting into it. Seven years ago. <laughs> it's oh, not yeah. There was a bachelor, um, Chris from Iowa City, and they call him like Prince Farming or something like that. And yeah. yeah, and I just knew like I grew up around that area and stuff. So that's the only reason I watched. And then I kind of got sucked into it. And then I watched a couple se seasons before that. But yeah, I mean, um, you know, you know, it'd be interesting if you brought in like a Lemonis. Like, I don't know if you've watched The Prophet. No. Oh, dude, you got to see The Prophet. Like, literally, like, that's. All right, I'm right. 
If there's ever been a television show that's impacted my business, it's The Profit. Oh, I've heard of. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the um. That's the guy that goes and helps. He like buys the business, like half the business, to like, and then rebuilds it and then sells it back to him or something like that. So what he does is, and I've met him um, twice now, and he literally does handshake deals. He doesn't do contracts, which is yeah. amazing. Right. But what he does is, I mean, they have like LOIs. So good faith contracts will hold water. Um, what he does is, I mean, he really, like I've seen him do 5% equity. I've seen him do 60% equity. Yeah, yeah, I've seen And him. what he'll say is, you know, I want this much of the company. Um, but it, he always does this, whatever I say goes. Yeah. And... And he's like, make no mistake. So we always meet, the first thing he does, meets with the whole team, every employee, and he says exactly, hey, I just, you know, I own this percentage of the company. I put this much money into it. A lot of things are going to change around here. And he's really a systems and process guy, which helped me enormously, like with employees, because I've never been good with employees, management and stuff like that. But it's really like just, you know, like sometimes just spending money on something when you're, when it just like, it makes so much sense to an outsider looking in, like that's kind of the stuff he does, like, but he'll, but they don't want to take the risk of it. So a lot of times what he does is just what, you know, it's kind of like with a, with a coach like that helps you maybe is there's stuff, you know, you should, that you need or whatever, but sometimes it just takes somebody with experience. I'll, I'll give you a quick example. I was on the, a clarity call, which I'm a thousand bucks an hour on there. Every question the guy asked me was easily found as probably the first result on Google. But because it came from me, the guy actually took action on it and did it. Plus he was paying you, so now he was more invested. <laughs> right. And I actually told him about halfway through. And I said, Dude, I just want to tell you, like, a lot of what I'm telling you is easily found. But he's like, you know, a lot of information is easily found, but I don't know what to – focus on yeah it's like so you said, get confidence too that that was the right information yeah and i think i think that's part uh, that's the double-edged sword of the age we live in in that you know like probably when you started when i started there was no guide on doing what you did like hacking you know that thing together right and and you know when i started there was there was nothing i mean i figured out a way to convert you know images into all this stuff and ringtones into all this stuff and there was no i mean i had to figure it all out whereas now today i mean there's so many tools out of the box and there's so much like these guys write these wordpress plugins that for free that i like a lot of times i get them and look at them and i just dissect the code and i just see like gosh this is twenty five thousand lines of code this guy just did it for free for the world like also like um i haven't used it but it's it's pretty innovative it's like zapier where it like connects all these applications together and mm -hmm. it allows you to really kind of like create your own application like have you used it much i haven't but one thing you were talking about like shopping carts and stuff like that um i should get i get you on the list um and just to get your your feedback and stuff on it so Andy Jenkins has a new thing called Kartra, which you can actually see the video of what all it's going to do. And it's alpha right now. It's it's probably going to launch, I would guess, mid, late Q4 to early Q1 of next year. And he actually is a creator of Webinar Jam. A webinar, this is what we're doing, um, is amazing. And if you do webinars, like you can do, I, I mean, it's I can show you how it works. It's amazing. Cool. But um, but Kartra is basically going to be the Infusionsoft killer. I mean, it just it it does so much more, and does it? The, my problem more with speed, Infusionsoft, but... and I had a legal settlement with them, so I can't. I got to be careful what I say, but um, not referring directly to them per se. Um, but there's a lot of companies out there that try to do everything all in one, like, you know, credit card processing, email funnels, landing pages. This one does it and it's an Andy Jenkins product. So it's super, super amazing. And I know he's dumped 
many seven figures into this thing. And so I'm actually going to meet with him about it next um, Monday and Tuesday. I'm going to talk with well, this team about I want to know. I mean, I've been, I've been a big Kajabi guy now with their name, Kajabi. I mean, if it's better, I mean, I'm, I'm always open. Yeah, I mean, I think when you see it, um, it's it's truly amazing. If you just watch the video on what it's – it's basically the video is what they envision it doing, and they had a lot of it in place, but I've seen it, and it really does that plus a lot. I mean, they're continuing to evolve it. But that's the thing I love about Andy is he'll – I think some of my biggest failures were I dumped like half a million into um, – like it was a thing called offer pools and it was amazing and it never launched. It never saw the light of day. And that's because I just kept dumping money into adding more features, more features, more features where one of the things like Andy does is right now he's got people in there using it and they're not paying anything, you know, and then he's going to open a beta program, pretty limited. How do you spell people, it? Um, you- Kartra. So just like, um, C-A-R-T and then uh, it's K. A R K A T A R A K A T A R K A T R A. So if you go to dot com, it it just I think it just shows like the update on where they're at. But if you they got different, I think if you go to dot biz, that's not there either. Um, gosh, where's the video ad? Um, opportunity we're about to explain to you maybe the most so yeah i think it's it's yeah it's on um the webinar jam channel and it's it's this i'll paste the link in the in the actual room um what they're going to do with this and anybody on here you should actually sign up for it because a lot of times people that get in on the beta and you know give it a whirl and stuff and give feedback He'll either give free accounts to you or like half off. Depends on, you know, if you give like feedback. Quite possibly the best for last. So um, you definitely want to watch that because, I mean, I, I'm telling you, I've seen it. And Andy's one of those guys. He's got almost 75 employees right now. Wow. So it's not like it's a guy in his basement coding it out. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But he's gotten to the point with his marketing genesis company to where, I mean, it's it's a – huge company now you know so but very very cool um that's awesome yeah so no when do we answer these questions i know so what's that when do we answer these questions over here okay well feel free to grab some of them i'm like um uh, gaber said is low cost traffic profitable or is it useless so I can answer that. So with my blog ninja thing, it's been the biggest return on investment that I ever spent. Um, and I'm talking from people that, cause my program is free. And if you already have web hosting, you're good. But if you don't, you can sign up for Bluehost for, I think we get like more than 60% off. So that traffic converts well for me. So, and I use um, ClickSense for that. But there's there's traffic monsoon. There's they call it the CP uh, PTC traffic. So it's basically like people click on an ad, like my ad in there. It says like you know learn how to become a blog ninja, and they click on it, and then for 15 seconds they have to move their mouse around, and that's all they have to do, and it costs you like I think it's less than a penny per click, and so it's also good just to test basic conversion and and. For us, it was really good to test load because if you go to Neobox and you spend 600 bucks, you'll get a million hit, like literally a million hits in. I mean, if you want to test what your server can handle, that's a good place. To I mean, is that real traffic or is that just like some algorithm using servers to just kill your, your server? <laughs> no, it's, real, it's real people. It's a very similar thing. They just, all they have to do is click on it, move their mouse a little bit, and they get you know, paid. And so there's people that sit there and they have to do it for five seconds. And so, I mean, you can price it from five seconds to 30 seconds. And so, I mean, it's funny because 90% of the ads are other PTC networks. So 
it's very incestuous in that you kind of need to just pick one and go because if you buy ads on each place, you'll find it's the same IP addresses um, that hit it because these guys log into each site and we'll do all the ads on the ad board and then log into the next site and they'll make their, you know, 20 bucks a day in three hours, you know, to do 20 bucks. But hey, you know, I'm sure and and you can geo target and stuff like that. But if you look at the, it would have been shoemoney.net at that time before it moved to Blog Ninja. We did over 15 million. If you go to similar web, that's actually connected to my Google Analytics. So it's quantified traffic. Um, let me go there because I don't want to misquote it. Um, you can see when I was buying a lot of this traffic, it was, I mean, well, that it only goes back to January, but you know, that was 750,000, but we did almost 10 million in one month. Uh, so this one only goes back so far, but if anyone's got a paid account, then you can go back farther than that. But so anyway, it's, um, it's, so to answer your question, I mean, I don't know how Brett feels about it, but for me, there's, you just have to figure out what do you want to use it for? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm this the niche, so it, it's hard to buy un, um, you know, buy traffic that you, you that isn't really focused to your niche. So it's like I've, I tried that a long time ago; that never really worked for me. So I, now it's like when I buy my you know, anything pay per click or whatever, it's you know, it's simply on Facebook where they've people that I can you know within social I can say, okay, this guy likes baseball, he likes pitching, he likes. Um, these teams, you know, I, I really need to know who my people are. If not, I just won't even convert at all. So I got to introduce you to a guy, um, remind me because he's got this new thing and I'm not sure how he does it, but it's might be something that you're interested in. Cause he can do exactly that. He can tell you like who went to sports illustrated this page on sports illustrated. It's yeah, that's huge. I think if yeah. I'm going to low cost, it's going to have to be like that. Yeah, I think. I forget it, it's he sells it on a per lead basis and so I'm buying it so that I can upload it to build a custom audience in Facebook because I know people have visited certain pages and it's it's working well I mean it's a smaller list you know because it's so concentrated and then you know the same email has to be used for Facebook and stuff like that but you know I mean it's it's converting very well. I mean, to make, I think to make a hundred bucks, I'm spending about eight bucks, but you know, it's not That's super nice. scalable, but you know, pick up a couple of those a day that it adds up really fast. So, um, somebody said, are you going to give me a chance to speak? So we don't open this up for other people to talk. We've made that mistake before. And then you have somebody showing their penis. So <laughs> we've had that before. So, we used um god what did we we used something before and some guy was like dancing to mm, 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 and i was like here it comes here it comes and then yeah wiener <laughs> so yeah um it's just it opens us up to a whole thing so we just do the chat muted um all the other stuff so basically like people asking like are you gonna do this so the show you know like i tell a lot of people the show and i lead in in the intro with it is the show isn't like a learn how to make money online thing. It is a show with me just rapping with successful people. And because I'm like, if you want to learn how to make money online or you want some tip on how to start and stuff like that, I've made tons of courses. And like, like I said, the one at bloggings.com is free. You can go through it. Um, keep an eye out. Cause I'm, I'm really, really contemplating doing a, an email ninja one because with the focus on funnels and, you know, and, probably, you know, working with click funnels and how that works and, you know, just different divided out by different systems and stuff like that too. So I don't think the conversion one would matter. The SEO one, I'm not, I don't know. I'd almost have to like get somebody to do that who wanted to, because SEO has never really been my thing. What, what about SEO for you? Yeah. I mean, it was big up front. I mean, really getting, my organics up and and that was just so big but like i said now i've just gone more social i mean it's more video facebook video youtube more snapchat more instagram it so i just that used to be a big thing for me now i mean it's not that i don't 
it's not a big thing. I mean, it's just now it's more tagging correctly in, in my social and, and just trying to grow my social exposure. Well, we got to run here. We're over an hour. So um, just thanks so much for, for coming on and yeah, let's, let's definitely. Stay in touch. And remind me, I'll introduce you to that guy. I don't know if his platform's up yet, but he's yeah. already got data and it's not 100% sure. He explained to me how he did it, but or how he's doing it. And it's super impressive. So, um, but yeah, to, to really micro target your niche. Yes. Yeah. It's really, really sweet. So, all right, cool, man. We'll take Thank care you. and, um, you know, stay in touch. Yeah, same here, man. Thank you. Appreciate all it. Right. Best of all. Take it easy. See you, man.